Hi, and in this Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to quickly show you how to make a really simple poster in Word. So the first thing I'm going to do is to enter some graphics. So I'm going to go up to Insert, Shape, and I'm going to use this curves shape here. Click on it, and then I'm going to click my mouse, click it again, move my mouse wherever I like, just keep clicking and as I click round you'll see that Word will form those curves for me. Now you do have to be very careful at the end here because if you don't accurately hit the beginning line it will sometimes do something a little funky. I'll just show you. If you kind of click, double click and then it doesn't quite work. So let's just go up again And as soon as it turns to a fill colour, just click and then Word will form this nice curved shape. Now in order to change the colour of this shape and maybe to add a little bit of texture, we need to either double click on the shape or go up to this format pane icon here. This will only appear if you've highlighted your shape or selected your shape and you're on the shape format tab at the top. So click on that and then you'll have this menu that appears. Make sure you're on this bucket icon and the fill refers to the colour inside the shape and the line refers to the outer border. So I'm going to get rid of the outer border by clicking no line and the fill, so I'm going to click on the pattern fill I'm going to select this pattern here, but you can select any one of these patterns. And then I'm going to change the colour. So I'm going to go down to this foreground bucket icon. Now, apologies, you can't see all the colours. But I'm going to go down to the bottom here where it says more colours. And then we have this dialog box. I can now move this little circle in the middle of the colour wheel to exactly the colour I want to use. Now the colour will appear in this box here but if you want it to be brighter or darker then of course just move this slider here. So I think we'll go somewhere about here and click OK. Once you've changed the colours, the pattern, you can go ahead and change the size orientation, ratio of your shape and also you can go to the top here where there's this circular arrow and rotate your shape as well. Now the easiest thing to do now is just to simply copy and paste this shape command or control C followed by command or control V. Then all I'm going to do is just slightly change the shape, flip it round. You can flip it as well that way completely up to you. Again go back over to this side here and change the colour. And then finally once more copy and paste. Change the colour one more time. Now if you want to move these different shapes behind each other or in front of each other, make sure they're highlighted, make sure you're on shape format and go over to this section here, bring forward, send backwards. Now, if you click on the drop down you can easily say bring to front or send to back. That will ensure that it will go behind the shape you want to. Alternatively, send it backwards, it will send it one shape backwards. So obviously we've created this shape first, this shape second, and this shape third. So if I just move this shape over, you can see, because this shape was made third, if I say send backwards, it will only send it behind this shape. So click on it, but it hasn't sent it behind this shape. So to prevent you having to keep clicking, if you just hit send back, 
then it would go back behind all the different shapes. Now to enter the black graphic on the top, we can again use some shapes. So go to insert, shape, and I'm going to choose the circle. And then I'm just simply going to click and drag. Now once again, we have a fill shape and we have an outline. So I'm going to, instead of going over to the menu to the right, I'm going to go straight up to shape fill and click no fill and the outline I'm going to change to black. Now if this outline isn't thick enough for you, you will have to go over to the menu over here, click on line, and go down to the width here. And you can just use those up or down arrows to change the width of that outline. Now I'm just going to stick at one for a minute. And then because this doesn't really represent the shape I want, I need to go up to edit shape here. Click on the drop down and select edit points. And what this does, it gives you the points that make up this different shape. And all I have to do is hold my cursor over the top of one of these boxes and simply pull and push to form the shape I want. Now if at any point you feel you've gone wrong, then all you do is press command or control Z and it will take you back one step. So I want to try to make this look as much like a vase as possible. You can add points as well, so if you move your cursor over the top of the line, click and drag, you will then add another point. I will just get rid of that. Once you're happy, just press enter. And once again, of course, you can use your squares and cursor to adjust the size and shape until you're satisfied with the end result. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a stalk. So again up to insert shapes and down to this curve shape here, which I believe is down in basic shapes. And then click and drag once again and you'll see this small arc appear. Now for this I'm going to go straight over to the menu to the right. I'm going to change the colour to black. My width up to one point. And I'm going to say no fill and solid line. And again I'm going to transform this so that it's where I want it. Now, if I just enlarge this stalk, it's not necessarily the shape I want. Now, the easiest way to go about doing this is again, go up to the edit shape icon and edit points. And it allows you therefore to grab this point here and just move it anywhere you like around your project. Not only that, you can change the curve by grabbing this handle and moving it so the curve is exactly where you want it. You can of course move the bottom one as well. Once you're happy, just click OK. And there you have the stalk. Now it's not quite met up with the vase, so you can either move the vase to the stalk or the stalk to the vase. I'm just going to use my arrow key. Perfect. And now we just want some leaves to add to this stalk. Now at any point you can go back and change these elements. So I think just at the moment, Let's just quickly change that point there. I just wanted to go up to the top here a little bit so I can add that leaf. Okay, now we're going to go back up to insert shapes and down to this teardrop shape here. Again, click and drag. And once again, shape fill, no fill, outline to black. And then we're going to go along to edit shape, click on the drop down and edit points. And we're going to try as much as we can to make this look like a leaf. You can again move these handles. So I think I'm going to add a point here so I can just move this leaf around a little bit more. Once you're happy, just press enter. 
And then what you can do with this particular shape is copy and paste. I'm just only going to make two of those because then I'm going to make a slightly different shape. Turn that one round, add it to my design. And again, do the same with this one. I'm going to copy and paste this one again and go back up to the shape format icon back to edit shape and click edit points again and this will just allow me to make a different leaf shape altogether press enter copy and paste to reduce the size of this one a little bit copy and paste again edit shape, edit points. Now if you want to just move one handle hold down the ALT key and you can format those handles individually. Now if you want to get rid of a point just hold the control key down and click and it will get rid of it for you. If you want a perfect curve make sure the handles are completely aligned in a straight line. Okay, perfect. Once you're happy with your design, then you can go ahead and export it. So there are several things that you can do at this point. Number one is you can print it out just as it is now onto an A4 page. The second thing is you can take a screenshot of this and just export it as you would normally a screenshot. Each individual computer generally takes a screenshot in a slightly different way. If you're on a Mac, it's the shift key, command key and number four. And the third way that you can do this is to save this as a PNG file. Now, in order to do that, you have to select each different element of this uh, design. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to group the colored elements together. So if I click on the colored elements, hold the command or control key down and just click on all the three of those elements. We're going to group those together. So make sure you're on shape format. Go up to group and select group. What that means is that you can now move all three of these together. And it also means that it's far easier now to go ahead and just select the leaves, the stalk and the vase. The first thing I'm going to select is the stalk because that generally is quite a challenge sometimes. Hold the command key down and then let's just go ahead and select all the leaves. Now you do have to be quite careful, make sure your cursor is only over the item that you want. Sometimes like you've just seen, I've now just unselected the stalk. So I'm going to go back to the leaf. It's now selected the stalk. I'm going to try and select this leaf. It doesn't like it, so let's try and select that leaf. So we've got the leaf, I've got this other leaf here, and now I'm going to hover over the stalk here. And now I've selected the stalk. And then finally to the vase. Once you've selected all of those elements, go up to group, select group and click group. Now you should be able to move the whole plant round as you want. And of course you can go ahead and move that round if you're not happy with where it's placed on your image. Now once you've done that, we need to go ahead and select both elements. So we're going to select the plant, hold the command and control key down, select the pebbles. Now this is where it becomes a bit of a challenge. As you, can, as you can see, the plant takes up all this space. So what I might try and do is select the pebbles first, then hit the command or control key and select the plant. Perfect. Now we can go and make that whole thing a group. Now the whole image is a group. So what we can now do is right click, go down to save as picture. I'll save it to my desktop. Make sure you're saving it as a PNG file. Now what that means is that it's not going to save the white areas that you see 
around the edges. It's only going to save the black and the coloured elements. It will also mean that you can stretch and pull this image and it won't lose quality. So I've saved that to my desktop, click save. And now if I just get rid of this image, go to insert, picture from file, select my PNG file and click insert. There you go, this is now a PNG file, which is an image file, so that can now be sent off to a printer if you wanted to, or somebody who's happy to print this image out for you if you wanted it to be larger. And you can stretch and pull this image now with no loss of quality. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.